So now I want us to think about the individual. That is, we've thought about structural conditions, social structures, and how those influence us. But it's important to avoid explanations that are based in structural determinacy, or in other words, that assume that the structural conditions in which we live determine our lives. When we talked about social structure relative to ascription and achievement, one of the things that we implicitly realized is that there are things that people do to acquire positions. Now, you can't acquire just about any position, and the social structure limits some of the capacity for you to realize those. So, you know, if I were living in 16th century France, 17th century France, there are clearly positions I could not acquire. If I weren't born into a royal family, I couldn't achieve the status of king. I couldn't just like suddenly, because I was really talented, become the king, right? The social structure of French society at that time period wouldn't allow for that. But neither would my life be completely determined by the position that I was born into. There would be some degree of flexibility. And I might find myself doing worse off or better off than the conditions that I was born into. And so we might ask, what is the role of the individual? How is it that agency plays a critical role in our lives? And how is it that we construct and maintain the identities that are important to us? We don't just inherit identities. There are things that we practically do in order to achieve and enact those identities. And so we might ask, what is agency? How do we construct identities? How are we socialized to become particular kinds of members and of society? And how do agents of socialization shape our identities and behaviors? So agency is our capacity, or um, as it says in the slide, our capability to act given the structural rules and resources that impact our behavior. Agency refers to the choices that we make and the actions that we ultimately take. Um, Our capacity to act is always influenced by social structure. There's never a condition of total free will. But neither is there a condition of absolute structural determinism. We almost always have some kinds of choices about what tacts we take as we move through the social world whether it's rules that we are following or ignoring or the resources that we possess or lack, our agency is always affected by external structural forces, but it nonetheless is something that we also concretely do as an expression of ourselves. So my friends know me as a particular kind of person. That person has certainly been influenced by a range of social conditions, but it's also part of my agency, of my continual inaction of a particular set of dispositions, and I am not just the product of my position. We know this because, like, if you look at siblings, you'll be like, well, those two siblings grew up in very similar conditions, but they have very different dispositions. They have different ways of being, different ways of acting, and that's partially because they have different identities and agencies. Some of this is biology. And some of this is because they have different sets of biological traits. And part of it is about the interaction between those biological traits and their environment. But we, in a very meaningful way, are able to do things in the world. And we might think about what are the ideal forms of social structure that properly enable us to do the sets of things that allow for human flourishing. So in a sense of Jane Addams or W.E.D. Du Bois, we might take a kind of social reform approach and ask, what are the sets of structural conditions that allow for the expression of agency within people that is healthy or that is beneficial overall? If you ask yourself for a moment, who am I? Um, You might come up with a range of answers like, Am I quiet or am I loud? Do I have a job as a barista who's making coffee? Um, Am I a student? Am I conservative or am I progressive? 
um, am I in the position of being a daughter where I have a family? Am I a friend to people? Um, am I anxious? Am I, in this case, a sociologist? There are different ways in which our lives are structured and we play different roles consistently. Our self-conceptualization consists of the thoughts and feelings we have of ourselves as physical, social, and emotional beings. This means that we have a physical presence in the world, our bodies matter for how we traverse that world, and our conceptualization of self is partially tied to our own experiences of our bodies. So um, for those of us who experience disabilities, that physical experience has a consequence for our self-conceptualization as well as our thoughts and our feelings. Um, attractiveness is something to think about in terms of our own self-conceptualizations and the ways in which people interact with us. It deeply matters. Age does. All kinds of things about our physicality are consequential for our understandings of self. We're also social beings. We play a range of social roles. So it's not just that we have an age, but within that age, we may play a social role of being, say, a child. My relationship to my parents changed considerably over my life course, where at one point in time, my job was basically as a child, as their son, to be, you know, hopefully not too much of a brat, not too difficult, but like they took care of me and I was sort of the person who was taken care of. As my parents aged, that relationship changes and it changes to one wherein my role as son, as the son to my parents, means something actually quite different. This is a social relationship that I'm embedded in that defines me as someone who is cared for or who provides a range of caring. I'm, we're also emotional beings. We have emotional lives and our emotions are things that we both have and that we do. And so, you know, um, uh, we could in, in, in this classroom hype each other up and actually like get super excited or I could be like, calm down, calm down, calm down. Think about the ways in which I can change your emotional experience just through my language. So if I lectured in a way like this, it would be very different. There's a way in which the energy of my voice produces an interactive and emotional experience within you that's going to kind of change the ways in which you experience that world. And so the self-concepts that we have are the interplay of our physical bodies, our physical experiences, our social relationships, and as they're interrelated to our emotional lives. The 20 statements test is just an exercise that you guys could try, um, maybe at the end of this lecture, to see how you define yourself. Ask yourself, who am I? and you're allowed to make 20 statements or use 20 words. So here I have an example on the screen of a particular reply to that test, uh, ways in which somebody comes up with this. Um, and so you might ask, oh, whoops, excuse me. Um, you might ask yourself, like, uh, how did you develop that self-conceptualization? And how do you become who it is that you are? So as if you take this 20-question test, if you write down 20 words, ask yourself, how did I develop that self-concept? Where did this come from? How did this, this happen where you became that kind of person? If you define yourself politically in a particular way as progressive or conservative, why? Where did that come from? What were the experiences? This helps get at the process of socialization the experiences that give us an identity and that teach us how to be members of a society. Two ideas about the individual that I think are very helpful to think with are the looking glass self and the generalized other. The looking glass self is an old idea, actually, from the earlier, actually, both of these are older ideas from the beginning part of the 20th century. And the looking glass self is about the ways in which our perception of how others see us affects our sense of self. In other words, you see this person looking in a mirror to prepare her face to the world. Our presentation of self 
has in part embedded within it our imagination of how others see us. That is, we often imagine how it is that we're seen, and that influences how it is that we think about ourselves. This is tied to a a view of social psychology. Um, But our sense of self develops from our social experiences and our social interactions. Sociologists largely reject the idea that we are born with personalities totally determined. Instead, our personalities are partially determined, but also partially emergent. And our conceptualization of how we are seen by others deeply influences our conceptualization of self. This is the idea of the looking glass self. The reason that is so important for a sociologist is that when we think about the self, we don't think of it as an interior thing that determines our actions. Instead, we think of it as a relational thing. In the actions that I take, the ways in which I undertake those actions is in part in anticipation of the impression and reaction of the other person. So that all of my actions anticipate an other out there in the world who is going to see that action and understand me in a particular way. This means that in part, we understand ourselves through how we imagine others think about the world. The generalized other is one version of this. It's just the ways in which the values and norms of the larger culture are things that we use to guide our behavior. So it's not just that we think about what a particular person might think, but instead, in general, what the society might think and that we imagine ourselves interacting with this generalized other. The generalized other being the the abstract conceptualization of what people are roughly like within our society. In this sense, our identities are constructed through the social influences that we encounter in our daily lives. And we participate in social interactions, and as we participate in social interactions, we become aware of how others see us and how they expect us to act in certain situations. So we constantly learn a set of expectations for our own actions in light of how other people interact with us. From our perceptions of how others see us, we may have developed a particular sense or feeling, pride, shame, acceptance, rejection, which in turn influences our self-concept. The insight here is that your self-concept is not how you feel about you. It is instead how you feel about you given the interactions that you've had with others. Because one of the ways in which we have access to ourselves is through the ways in which other people interact with us. We are able to see ourselves in part through interpreting the ways in which other people look at us. Imagine yourself in a a party. You're with a group of friends and someone looks at you as you speak and they kind of cringe. They like do something where they're like, oh, you know, they seem uh, disturbed by something. This produces in most of us a deep sense of insecurity. We might think, oh my God, maybe I have lettuce in my teeth, right? Like maybe there's something about my face right now that caused this person to react in this way. It caused them to be like, ooh, there's something gross about what, about this person that they're interacting with. And if you have enough of those experiences, you begin to see yourself through that lens. You begin to understand yourself through that. Other people work to produce our own senses of self. So, you know, you have some friends who are very, very supportive of you and who constantly tell you that you look great and that you're, you know, a really good friend and da-da-da. And you might have other friends who aren't as generous. And those things influence you. They, like, they seep into your sense of self. What I want you to take home from this is the interactive dynamic of self-construction, that your understanding of who you are is not just this like internal 
drive and 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 determinative set of things like your you know genetics and dispositions but instead it's partially formed partially formed by your experiences of interpreting how it is that other people see you i wonder what i look like i wonder how people interpreted that well you get to see their reactions and then you begin to internalize that because it gives you information about how others are experiencing you in the world. Yourself, then, is not this pure pre-social thing. It is instead partially determined by things that are not related to social structure, like genetics, etc., but also deeply influenced by social structure insofar as People respond to you relative to the norms and expectations that they themselves have learned and in terms of how it is that they interpret your being relative to those expectations. And we all go through a process of internalization, this kind of looking glass process. 